Hello, this video will be an assembly guide for building your Mobius 3 extruder. The bill of materials, STL files, and assembly guide can be found on the War on Design website. I will be building along to the manual and giving some hints and tips while building my Mobius 3 extruder here. All the parts are printed in eSun ABS Plus in black. Uh, because frankly I'm too lazy at this point to print accent colors. So starting off, the first thing you're going to want to do is take these two plates here and you're going to need to install M3 nuts on the one with the hex heads. On this side uh, obviously there's rounded holes, you don't need to install those there. And then you're going to need to install your F69 RS bearings. These should press fit in with very little to no play and once installed they should sit flush with the printed surface. If they are on an angle or sitting up uh, you may need to uh, recalibrate and print the part or uh, check make sure you don't have any uh, print imperfections holding these up. And next we are going to install the Bontec drive gear on our 5mm shaft. In the amendum of the guide it has the specifications on where to put the flats or uh, if you purchase them with a flat along the whole length or like me I have the ability to uh, I have access to a surface grinder so I can grind a flat down the whole length that works too. Before assembling though what you should do is ensure that your pin fits through your bearings like so. If it does not, uh, simply chuck the pin in a uh, electric drill and spin it with some sandpaper for 600 grit uh, roughly for a few seconds. This will take off the ever so slight amount, one to thou, that you may need to take off to ensure that it fits good in your bearings. So for assembling the drive shaft, one of the Bontec gears comes with no set screw and one comes with a set screw. We're going to want the one with the set screw and we're going to need two of the four millimeter printed spacers. Now for setting the position of your Bontech gear, uh, for setting the position of the Bontech drive gear along the drive shaft, simply install it with the filament feeding teeth down onto a bearing and simply push. And that is the position where you need to lock it in place. Now with the set screws on your Mobius extruder, you will want to use a Loctite or some other form of thread locker adhesive. For demonstration purposes, I'm not using that right now uh, because I'm probably gonna take this apart after. And be very careful when tightening this set screw. They are very easy to strip the threads and then you're gonna be drilling out your set screw, which is a pain in the butt. Now, once that's pre-assembled, you're going to be assembling your idler gear. Again, with this, there are two parts, one with the round hole and one with the hex hole for the nut. And then you're going to take your idler and the two pin bearings Install them on the shaft that comes with the kit and then install the idler over top. Now uh, with these bearings I do grease them up just a little bit with some white lithium grease just to get them wet. Now the one with the uh, screw head circular clearance hole you're going to install that with the filament teeth closest to that side simply slightly push it in and then the hex headed side uh, gets the drive teeth. You're going to want to push those together. Now what may happen you'll find is it'll seat more on one side than the other. Simply use like an allen key or something and just gently push the pin down so that it is equally seated on both sides. Like so. And then we are going to take our M2 by 10 millimeter self-tapping screws and install those. 
Now what I like to do to ensure that everything stays lined up is just start one. And then install the second one and then go back to the first one. If these are uh, cocked or racked at all, uh, it will have filament feeding issues. And with all screws into printed parts, you need to ensure not to over tighten as you can strip the thread out. If you do that, um, you may get by with using a longer screw at that point, or you may need to uh, reprint the part. And there we go. And again, double ensure that everything is lined up and that the idler spins freely. There should be a slight amount of play. That is okay, and that is as designed. It'll help ensure that the filament lines up between the two Bontag gears. We are going to install the latch lock arm with the screw head side up. We need our M3 by 20 millimeter screw. And then you're going to use a M3 lock nut on the other side. Don't over tighten it. Uh, if you tighten it too much, the latch arm won't work. That's why we use the lock nut, so you don't need to really reef on it. There we go. And we can put that aside for now. And for the tension arm, you get your M3 by 12 mil screw, install that, and then install your other M3 lock nut. Now one tip with these lock nuts, um, if you get them from like China, for example, sometimes the when you go to thread them, it can be uh, pretty nasty. So what I do is actually I, I hold on to them in like a vise or something, or run a screw through it first before actually using them in the item. That way they thread a little bit nicer, but they still function. I wouldn't use them over and over and over again, but for a few times it works. So once you get the uh, screw all the way in, you actually want to back it out once that lock nut is seated, uh, because this is how you put tension on the two gears together. So you want no tension to start off with and you adjust from there. And next we need to assemble the door. So this is one of them already assembled. When you go to assemble them, the center piece takes the uh, Bowden threaded portion and it snaps into position. Now one side will have a slightly bigger opening when you look at it, and that's the side you install it from, and they should snap in. And then you have a little cutout here for the bigger part that indexes off that. And then the smaller part, you simply match the length of the arm. So long arms on one side, short arms on the other, like so. And now we need to assemble the body of the extruder. So we take the plate that has the circular holes. Those are for the screw heads. We put our drive gear in, put it through our idler portion here and ensure you have your gears lined up correctly. And then what I do is I start with the right door, put that in position. And then this part can be a little tricky, but you have to drop your screw through the front, through the door, through the tension arm, and then out through the back. Sometimes it helps to spin the screw all the way through. There we go. And then you drop the back portion on. And this is probably the uh, one of the trickiest parts of the assembly because it feels like you kind of need three arms for it. And then we do the same with the other door. Now, now when you put the doors on, you need to ensure, because uh, you can install them backwards, but simply look at the filament feed path and ensure it lines up. Now for this one, the screw goes through the front, through the door, 
and then underneath the tensioning screw there. And for now, uh, just finger tight. You don't need to reef on these yet. There we go. And that is the body assembled. And now we're going to need to install our 80 tooth gear. Now I've already uh, pre-assembled my 80 tooth gear. I have a video on how to assemble these. Uh, essentially, you take a 20 tooth, you pop the flange off of it with a bottle opener, you push it in, and you put your five M3 by eight millimeter screws in, and that's how you assemble your 80 tooth. And it slides on like so. You do want an ever so slight gap. Again, use Loctite uh, on these set screws because you do not want these coming loose during a print. And you tighten those into position. And there you go. Now moving on to the base, we start with the motor. First thing you will need to do is install your damper. This is an AstroSyn style damper. Uh, you need to ensure that of the four holes, uh, the two are cleared for the screw to go through and then two are tapped. So you install that like so. Use your M3 by six millimeter screws to screw that down. And then once that's screwed down, you need to install your 20 tooth. Now for the 20 tooth, uh, you may need to adjust it um, depending on the model of stepper motor you have, how long the dry shaft is, to find the proper position so that it lines up with your 80 tooth gear. And now we need to assemble the body to the base. So the first thing we're going to do is just kind of loop on the 188 millimeter loop. Drop that onto the base, and then drop your M3 by eight millimeter screws down there. And you just wanna get them started for now. You don't need to have them too tight because you're gonna to have to adjust the uh, position of the base on the damper later to tension the belt. And then once that's installed, you're going to want to install the base to the body. That's relatively simple. You slide that belt over, and then voila. And you're going to take your remaining M3 by 30 mils. Start with the middle one. Screw that in now. Uh, when you're installing these, be careful not to shove the whole screw through right away because you'll pop the uh, M3 nut off the back and then you're going to have a fun time either repositioning it or you're going to have to disassemble to put the uh, M3 nut back in. And then lastly, give everything a tighten. And the final step is to install your Bowden connectors. Uh, this is a style that comes with the E3D kits. You can buy these on McMaster as well. These are a little bit better as they don't chew up the uh, Bowden tube as much as the style, which you tend to get off AliExpress and from China, but these are cheaper. So these simply just screw on each end. And you don't need to, you know, reef these on. And there you go. That is your assembled Mobius 3 extruder. Now, once it's assembled, you're gonna to want to tension your belt. To tension, uh, simply with these two screws to the dampers loose, you push the body up, and this puts tension on the belt, and you tighten them. And that is it. You can give it a feel. It should feel a little springy. And then let's give it a few spins by hand to ensure that your 20 tooth and 80 tooth belt alignment is good. 
In this case, it's a little bit off, so I'll have to adjust that 20 tooth to ensure that this belt is roughly in the middle of the 80 tooth. Another thing to go over is when you are assembling this, uh, one thing I forgot to mention is for this portion here, this is what the filament feeds through. If your printer is properly calibrated, the filament should fit through this hole, no problem. However, if you find it's too tight, uh, simply use like a small two millimeter or so drill bit to open that up. With your Bontech gears, the drive gear and the set screw, uh, it's hard to get some lighting in here, you need to ensure that that set screw does not stick up too far as as the gears rotate if it's up too far it'll push the gears apart and that will cause inconsistent extrusion so you may need to depending how deep you cut the flats on your 5 mil rod you need to cut deeper flats or file the set screw down a bit so it's a little bit shorter and again simply open both doors like this this is how you would clean it out this is your tensioning arm what I do is when I install it, I'll feed some filament through and then I'll give it a tug and tighten this. You don't need to give it too much pressure to ensure that the filament is properly gripped. Usually you can kind of go by hand and then when you need to extract filament, if you want to pull it out, you flip up the latch, you make sure the gears are separated and then you, the gears are disengaged at that point and they won't grab the filament and you can pull it right out. When you install this on your printer, uh, the recommended steps per millimeter are 560, uh, depending on the components you use, how the gears were cut, um, how well your 80 tooth is printed, you probably will need to adjust that. I know my printer sits around 567 steps per millimeter. Your printer will vary. So that is the assembly of a Mobius 3 extruder. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask them below or uh, hit up the Discord. There's a wealth of information with many people in there who are very knowledgeable about this printer who will be happy to help. It doesn't balance. Whatever. Have a good day.